I'm going to have a patient laying on, lying on their side, facing away from me. The pillows that you all have can be helpful, again, just kind of putting between the patient's leg, mainly because, not just kind of bringing the tissue up to us, but it does put a little bit of varus stress on it, like almost like a varus stress test, which means if I really want to keep that knee in an open packed position, what's my ideal knee flexion? About 30 degrees, right. Okay, so a little bit of open pack position for that. And then, if I'm looking for the LCL, and we're gonna look at lateral meniscus as well. Those are two main, main structures I'm gonna have you all just visualize today. Our bony reference point will be the fibular head. Okay, so we're gonna scan down and start trying to recognize that on, on this picture, the pictures that you have, will be the far right corner. You'll see the fibula and, the, and that lateral collateral ligament is gonna be the tight hyperechoic tissue that comes off of it. I don't really expect you to get great visualization right now, the structures directly underneath. I do have them listed for you. You can see kind of part of the popliteus, part of that kind of femoral condyle bursa, and maybe that meniscofemoral ligament. But those are kind of hidden underneath there. Some people, they pop a little bit easier than others. But for our structures, our, the structures we want to visualize today will be the lateral collateral ligament, fibula, and we're going to trace that up toward the femur. All right, so again, uh, patients in that kind of sideline position. And then from there, if we toggle or move our transducers slightly posterior, now we can kind of get behind that LCL a little bit and get a good visualization of the femoral and tibial condyles as they come together. And I have always kind of call it like a little pizza wedge. That's gonna be that uh, posterior lateral horn of the meniscus, all right? So again, we know that that's kind of intraarticular. So we are definitely not using an ultrasound to diagnose like a meniscus tear. We, don't, we can't see part of that. We're only using the edge of it. But if something has happened inside that knee, and especially intraarticular, we're going to see fluid. We're going to see extra fluid in around that area. And that's somebody that you would have and you would visualize with that positive brush test. And now maybe you're just getting a little bit of clarification of, I bet something's going on around that location. That's typically where for your all's uh, ability, a nice way to kind of visualize that. And then finally, we're gonna lay our patient on their stomach so we can get a look at the biceps femoris insertional point on, again, that fibular head. So we're gonna use the fibula as our reference point. We'll keep it on the bottom right. And then that biceps femoris tendon will not be as bright as the, um, as the ligament, I'm sorry, as the ligament, the LCL ligament. It'll be a little bit darker. Some tendons pop a little bit more. Think about the supraspinatus tendon we've seen in the shoulder. That one was really, really bright. Some tendons have a little bit more of like a um, homogenous view, like a little bit of a blended view here. Okay, biceps femoris will have a little bit of that as well. Okay, so think about that tendinopathy, insertional tendinopathy, that tendonitis that may be affected that biceps femoris tendon. Now, for the LCL, let, let your palpation skills start first, okay? It's, as opposed to so many times we just drop a transducer and we're like, where am I? If we're using the fibular head as our reference point, then just palpate the fibular head. And then let's put the transducer directly on top of that fibular head so you can kind of see it pop like that, okay? And so now you're gonna see that lateral collateral ligament, that nice bright tissue that's coming up on top, okay? And as it inserts on top of the fibular head here. Okay, remember, bone's gonna be dark cortical outline of the bone, and then you can slide up from there. Okay, so again, palpation skills will kind of reign supreme in this spot. There we go, there we go. Let my palpation skills kick in there. All right, so here's kind of, again, LCL ligaments right there. You can see it tapering off onto the fibular head. It's going all the way up. I can't, obviously, I'm not getting a full visualization, but if I follow it up now, I'm getting up on the femur, femoral condyle, and I can trail, and it goes away right here. Why? Well, that's because I'm getting part of that joint space, and I've opened it up, okay? But if you're suspecting a lateral collateral lateral tear, so think about the rotational instabilities we've talked about, you're not gonna see those nice, uh, those nice striations. You're gonna see a disruption, and it's gonna feel like either jagged, or you're gonna see actually like a dark cut in that location there, okay? There we go. So now I'm starting to kind of go a little bit more posterior and not much. Again, that's still fibula there. And see, this looks a little bit different than the picture I showed you, but there's the joint space. Okay, so visualize where the femur's coming down. I've got a fibula over here, a little bit of the tibia showing. There's my joint space. 
So if I tilt that transducer just slightly, I can have that meniscus maybe kind of become a little bit brighter. But you can see it's already beveled. There's that little, kind of call it kind of like a pizza shaped showing up. It's Five Points Pizza, okay, those who know East Nashville. All right, so you can start to see that edge of it is going to taper down. So again, it's a great location for me to scan if I'm suspecting any form of pathology there, like inside that knee. And again, I can make that coloring look darker just by tilting that transducer. See the edge of, edge of the femur? See how it kind of like drops down? That's a normal edge of that condyle. And that's a great uh, bony landmark to know, okay, now I've got a good view. I've got fibula coming up over here. I've got the edge of the tibia. If I scan a little bit more posterior, can I hang on to that? Do I see any type of fluid popping up in and around that area? Okay. So LCL, lateral meniscus, or really that lateral joint space. Okay. So now, if you're going to try to get a good visualization of the biceps from Morris, okay? Post, the, per, the patient's going to be lying down on their stomach. I'm going to scan my palpation skills again. Palpate the posterior aspect of that fibula. And now, just place a transducer on it. So again, we're trying to use superior to be the left of the screen, right of the screen is inferior. This kind of, for our sake, visual, visualizing it, it makes sense, okay? Sometimes it just doesn't quite make sense. Um, again, I can make that, that fibular head pop. There's that biceps femoris tendon. Really, really bright here. Then it starts to become a little bit darker as it starts to go a little bit more superior. But if, again, this would be a lo great location. If I'm suspecting some tendinopathy, just pause it, do that little bit of a measurement to see any type of thickening. Or do I suspect uh, an active tendonitis, like as a fresh one, you won't typically see any thickening because that's typically indicative of one that's been there for a long time. But it will become brighter, um, which will be a dead giveaway that I'm dealing with an active inflammation.